Oh, right. Truck yeah. zero being um, no. So now we're gonna get into my study um, and how you know the process we were through. Active and angle force um, reduction of passive grade to extend to. My research yeah, question was: the Is cupping an active the last one for um, reduction of pain? The interesting piece, which I'll touch on again in a little bit, is. Instead of using a standard going out, we're going to do some of the literature. Um, so these are a few um, studies that I used to help design my study. The validity uh, research on a standard going out. You're reading them. And the first um, six studies that came up were all about this iPhone app. On the top, I um, used dry cut. So I decided I was going to try this out and see how that went. Um, uh, in the bottom, which I actually really enjoyed using them. That's why they had the iPhone app. It's kind of nice to do as much. But there, again, there isn't much in the way that the start point of a style blind company gives you a range of motion. When we were going through the research process, I thought it was different. It took me a little bit to get used to. We actually did a familiarization session before. We started um, on I did have to branch out um, and use just to get used to it and exactly what I was talking about, but this was close. Yeah, so standard going um, on. We have to use what's available to us. Um, so then we had our patients after this first meeting that counted off. So basically, what first these first four treatment. studies found uh, was they went four um, more times significant reduction in their perceived pain um, of patients. Um, treatment. But these were some different ones. So uh, Markowski um, and for our cupping group, used, we had um, they were sub um, so basically just did on a patient back pain. Basically, um, one finger you say what loud point at all. This one is kind of the one I've done mostly off the top five. And then we did a 10 minute treatment. We set a timer for 10 um, minutes once we put the cup again, on. Looking at, uh, this one looked at neck off. pain, uh, yeah, another low back pain. five times. Um, and we had a minimum of 48 all, hours in between each session. Uh, looked so at for a lot of patients based on their schedule as a college student. Um, but all four of those studies, right. they found, again, found a significant um, reduction in perceived pain. And then um, for the all five patients. sessions it's had to be completed within um, three weeks. So now we're going to go through a little um, bit of the methods. Again, with the um, minimum of 48 hours in between sessions. Um, so my design, we did a true experimental design. The independent variables were basically what group and as patients were all measurements were separated into. So before we started, and we had a structure group as well. Uh, and then some of my dependent variables um, were so this pain, was the uh, active pain, pain charts from the app and passive brain um, toe extension. So you can see there's uh, and this start, study was where you started at and where you stopped, stopped and it gives you what your range of motion was. Um, so, uh, so I had five patients, uh, all that I self identified as female. Uh, uh, we had three in our company. So that was really nice. It made it a lot smoother and not all the way to my breakdown of math. How many degrees change was it in college? Um, so it's nice I could go right from the app. Once we had our five patients, we were randomly placed. By a number generator into either the cupping or the stretching. Um, we're going to do a quick cupping um, breakdown. Um, so, what we're going to do, we're gonna build out a, um, we have to get a one volunteer from each group, age, age, come up, gender, um, and I'll put a couple uh, average daily physical like activity levels, how many hours. Uh, and, and then you guys can go back to group, we'll do it on for about five minutes. And then their previous um, experience, give you guys a little break from the research talk. Yep, there's a yes or no. And then after, we're going to take that off and then have you guys talk about kind of how it felt. And we used the visual analog scale, which we measured before the first treatment, and after the last. Um, which basically so is on a kind of kind of scale of separate again. If you want to send one person up, you can put a cup on. You, know, you got to run the right truck. Zero being no pain at all. Um, uh, we're just going to do it on the forearm for uh, active so ankle pain. Uh, or such as passive grade to extension. Again, we're measured before the first treatment and after the last one. Uh, the interesting piece, which I'll touch on again in a little bit, is instead of using a standard goniometer, we used an iPhone app. Um, and this is because I was looking for the validity research on a standard goniometer. And the first six studies that came up were all about this iPhone app. Um, so I decided I was going to try this out and see how that went. Um, it was a clinician. I actually really enjoyed using the, the iPhone app. It was kind of nice to you know it was like an app. Um, you kind of have a start point and a stop point, and then it gives you what your range of motion is. Um, so I thought that was, it was different. It took a little bit of getting used to. Uh, so we actually did a familiarization session before we started measuring on patients, um, just to get used to it and kind of see what the difference was between that and a standard going on there. Um, so then we had our patients after this first meeting, that counted also as their first treatment. Uh, and then they went four more times with their um, treatment that they received, whether it was a stretching group or a cupping group. Um, for our cupping group, we had, um, so basically just did the patient, basically with one finger, you say what point hurts the most, and that's where we cupped over. Um, and then we did a 10 minute treatment. So we set a timer for 10 minutes. Once we put the cup on, when it was done, we took it off. Uh, and they did that five times. And we'd have a minimum of 48 hours in between each session. So for a lot of patients, based on their schedule as a college student, we did Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and then all five sessions had to be completed within three weeks. Um, again, with a minimum of 48 hours in between sessions. So sometimes over a week, they had more than 48 hours. So generally, they were 48 hours in between. Um, and as I mentioned, all measurements were pre were taken before we started, and once again, now. Um, so as I mentioned, this was the, these are some screenshots from the app. Um, so you can see there's, it gives you a start where you started at and where you stopped and it gives you what your range of motion was. Um, so you don't have to sit and fumble with the goniometer and say, where did I start? I don't remember which, which quadrant I started in. 
Uh, so that was really nice. It made it a lot smoother and not kind of sit there and write down the math of how many degrees change was it. Uh, so it's nice I could go right from the app. It was told me. And it was blurry. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do a quick cupping breakout. Um, so what we're going to do um, if we could have one volunteer from each group come up, um, and I'll put a cup on you. Again, this is voluntary. Um, and then you guys can go back to your group. We'll leave it on for about five minutes, um, give you guys a little break from the research talk. Um, and then after, we're going to take that off and then have you guys talk about kind of how it felt. All right, so while you guys are cooking, um, we're going to go through, um, we'll get through some of the dry pieces so you guys can keep moving. So now we're getting into some of the results of what we found. Um, we used uh, two by two, so a group by time, mixed factorial analysis of variance, um, looking at each independent variable as a separate test. Um, so some of our stats, just to kind of fill you guys in, our average age is about 20 years old, give or take one year. Um, and our average physical activity is about 2.4 years. Um, so the big piece that we found that was exciting um, was for our visual analog scale. Um, we had, so you can see our um, mean score prior to cupping and our mean score after. Um, and this is for our cupping group and then on the second half is our uh, uh, stretching group. So you can see there's a pretty big change in our cupping group and not so much in our stretching group. Um, and then we have a, a nice visual here for you. So basically what we found is there was a statistically significant change in perceived pain before and after treatment for our cupping group and not so much for our stretching group. So that was kind of our big woohoo that we found significant. Uh, and the other exciting piece was that we found there's a, another stat, it's called partial, partial eta squared, which basically tells us that the intervention was actually what caused this change as opposed to extraneous factors. Uh, so usually a score closer to one is what we're looking for. Uh, and I had 0.87, so um, that was also exciting for us. Um, and this is basically what we just told you. Um, and then for our ankle range of motion and our toe range of motion, uh, we did not find statistical significance. Uh, we did see a big change in toe range of motion. So that was something we thought that might, going forward, be better to look at the research with a bigger number of people. Um, then we might see some significance there. Um, so we're gonna go into the discussion, basically what does this mean? Uh, so my study that I did was consistent with the findings of Amadi, Kim, Lausch, and Markowski that cupping is an effective intervention to reduce perceived pain in patients. Uh, currently, so the NATA is our national organization, for those of you who don't know, um, and they put out position statements on various treatments or protocols and things that they believe are the best things for us to do. Um, the NATA does not currently have a position statement around cupping, um, so there's nothing for us to relate to there. Um, so basically what this study showed us is provide, this provides evidence for the efficacy of cupping um, for another specific path, pathology. Again, we mentioned that these four studies looked at very specific injuries um, or pathologies. Um, so this is just one more that we can add to the list. So we're starting to build the body of research around cupping that now we know it's good for headaches and for low back pain, but now we can also add cupping to this for plant fish eggs. Um, so, some of the limitations of this study, and then I'm going to also suggest some future research. Um, one of my limitations was that I did have all females. Um, so, this is going to be less generalizable to the general population. Obviously, we have the entire general population. Um, I did have a small number of participants, so it's kind of tough sometimes to see how, big, how great the effect was with uh, only five people. Um, and we also didn't control for any outside activity, so we didn't tell them you can't go play sports or you can't go get another treatment. So. We had no way of knowing that if someone was going also to get a foot massage twice a week. Um, so this was something that we didn't control for. Uh, so as far as future research goes, uh, I would like to see someone examine, so what we're doing now, if you guys have on is a stationary method. There's also a method where we can move it around. It's a dynamic method that we call stripping. Um, so I would like to see someone explore the difference between a stationary and a dynamic method. Um, would like to see a study with a larger population um, and then again, including the males in that as well. Um, so we're going to pause here, and we're going to take the cups off you guys, and then we're going to come back to our discussion and see um, how you guys are feeling about it. So whoever has the cups, you guys want to come up, and we'll take those off you. 
All right, so those of you who had the cup on, if you guys can go back to your group, tell them what you felt, if you liked it, if you didn't, if it was different than what you thought it would be. Uh, we'll give you about two minutes to, to talk about that. All right, so we're going to come back, and uh, if we can have people share, if we have one group share what you thought about the treatment, one group share, you know, was it different than you expected, and then another group whether you liked it or not. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it didn't feel that bad. Anyway, so. Yeah. What can you explain a little bit? What it felt like to you? It felt. It felt like it was actually just on your arm. Like I could feel the tendons move a lot more under my arm. It felt yeah. a little bit different, but it wasn't bad at all. Thank you. Steer fingers. <laughs> <laughs> In the back. I thought it was gonna hurt. Like when I took it off, it touched the skin, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was definitely different than I was expecting. Did you like it? Good, bad, indifferent. It doesn't really feel the difference, but I didn't have any pain in my forearms. So. Yeah. Tina, how? Uh, your thoughts? I thought it was more comfortable than I thought it would be. Like, besides the first one, I thought it was good because I feel like I lost power in my arms. But then, when I was in the operation, I think if I had a problem area, I think it would improve and I'd probably use it. But. Yeah. I thought it was good. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Have you had your have you had any experience with it previously? Or? Yeah, yeah, I've had it not an injury, but I've had it done and done shake strips before. Okay. I think it's a, yeah, it's not painful. Alright, so I'm glad we gave you guys an opportunity just to see kind of what that feels like and give you a better sense of what we're talking about here. Um, so we're going to start to wrap up um, and with our conclusion. So basically, what does this mean? Uh, primary data from this study supports cupping as an effective therapeutic intervention for patients with plantar fasciitis symptoms. Um, and again, further ne further research would be needed to, again, with a bigger, larger population, again, including males, uh, just to kind of give us some more feed to these numbers, make it a little more robust. Um, so these are my references. Um, if you can read them, <laughs> they're small. Um, is there any questions? 